yeah hello everyone welcome back to online video lectures and dsp uh, this is perhaps the last lecture on the topic of sampling then we will move on to uh, other topics okay the topic is changing the sampling rate by a non integer factor so let me quickly uh, remind you where we stand right now okay uh, in terms of sampling uh, this is a kind of seventh lecture the first initially basics of periodic sampling are discussed second when you sample a continuous time signal the frequency domain uh, relationships are discussed then third lecture given a discrete time signal uh, how do you reconstruct back the continuous time signal those concepts are discussed fourth lecture you are given a continuous time signal uh, but you want to process it in the discrete time domain so the relationships between the continuous time fourier transform and the discrete discrete time fourier transform are discussed and then uh, how do you decrease the sampling rate of a discrete time signal is discussed followed by increasing the sampling rate of a discrete time signal so in this lecture we would be discussing you again in the uh, consider the case of changing the sampling rate here as well but now not a, a, any by an integer factor as it was the case in the last couple of lectures so that's the topic for our today's discussion so with that background let me move on to the uh, uh, this desktop sharing mode and let me also move to notebook mode okay right hope you are able to that's visible there i hope so right so this uh, the goal now is to change the sampling rate by a non integer factor what you would be going to see shortly is uh, you could in fact do it it is possible to do this by changing by both doing a combination of both down sampling and up sampling by an integer factor you could uh, achieve uh, changing the sampling rate by non integer factor so that's what is the message here let's see uh, some example here so for example uh, let's take uh, the new time period t prime is equal to 1.5 times the original time period okay so you have here also you consider the case where you have a discrete time signal and you want to change the sampling rate of that discrete time signal okay so the t is the uh, you could think of it as they consider it as the sampling rate of the discrete time signal that's for which you need to do now for the sampling well you could write it as 3 times t by 2 so if you notice we have written by a non integer factor so uh, these are the rational functions that you still consider here so how do you achieve a sampling rate of 3t by 2 which is a non integer value but a rational function well uh, you could do this by first uh, should we do up sampling or down sampling Mm, if you do first the down sampling aliasing could uh, occur mm, but so better you do first the up sampling followed by the down sampling so up sample is what we would like to do first what's the value with which you need to do up sample by uh, that's t should become t by 2 that's where that means you take double the samples when you do t by 2 so you have to up sample by 2 right and then we would like to do down sample okay down sample by 3 that's how you achieve so you first up sample by 2 and then down sample it by uh, 3 let's you could yeah with that example now you could assume you could generalize it for example what i want to achieve is m and l i'm using the same uh, same symbols that I used in up sampling and down sampling here okay suppose if I want to do it m times t divided by l that means I need to up sample up sample by yeah t t by l of the time duration is reducing you are taking more samples so you are up sample it by l right and then you down sample your signal okay you don't sample it uh, by m okay this is the uh, thing here right 
so uh, let's what we do now is we already so if you do not remember right now or didn't go through it properly the earlier uh, down sampling and up sampling by integer uh, uh, by integer values please go through that because that serves as the basis here we start from there in fact and move forward here okay so let's draw the block diagrams of both up sampling and down sampling here for a given signal x of n that will give you some further insights to us that's going to give us right so you have a signal x of n initially you need to do up sampling how do you do the up sampling uh, you first expand the uh, signal followed by a low pass factoring with again l hope you remember that the last class that's the last class so you do expansion by l right that means you insert l minus one zeros between any two uh, existing values right and after that you do a low pass filtering and uh, uh, the gain should be equal to the gain for this low pass filtering should be equal to l and what was the cutoff frequency you will of course up sampling there are you need to get rid of multiple copies get only just one copy within the interval of 2 pi omega small omega so you do cut off frequency of pi by l you just retain copy from minus pi by l to plus pi by l that's as far as the up sampling by factor l and on the result you need to down sample now do you remember how you down sample uh, this down sample could could introduce aliasing so you would first get rid of aliasing if you want to down sample by a factor of m you first do low pass filtering with a cutoff frequency of pi by m again if you don't remember this part please go back to last but one lecture okay you do a low pass filtering here and the gain for this low pass filtering is one only and you use a cutoff frequency of pi by m here that's what you do right and after that there is this down sampling block here right that's where you do the scaling across omega axis amplitude is modified and a few more other things happening there so just that we were the block which we were earlier referring with this right, come here right and that's what would give you the end result right so let me further write here you have initially x of n signal the moment you are uh, expanding the signal what you get you call it by x subscript e of n and after this low pass filtering and everything you are getting a sample with uh, uh, increased sample rate up sampling so increased sample rate what is the sim what is the notation you are using earlier x i subscript of n and with this low pass filtering we were using the notation of tilde notation if you recollect so x i of n is up sample sorry uh, done a low pass filtering so we call it as x i tilde of n okay down sampled or decreased number of samples we were calling it as x d for this tilde signal so x d tilde of n okay in the same note let me also write what are the time periods at the end of each of those blocks or at the beginning of each of those blocks let's write it so for example for x of n here it has a uh, sample at t the moment you are expanding it that's becoming t by l you are expanding it by l after low pass filtering this has nothing to do with the sampling rate so that would remain as t by l and um, what about this this is again a low pass filtering not going to modify your uh, time period okay this is indeed this down sampling by m would make this as mt by l okay do you see now any scope for uh, simplifying this block diagram uh, well you have two low pass filters is it possible to combine them one is cutting off 
the frequencies with a threshold of pi by l and another is cutting off by thresholds of pi by m so what would be the effective one suppose assume that you are in one case the cutoff is for example 90 degrees and the another case it is 60 degrees so equivalently it is equivalent to cutting off everything by 60 degrees right that's the least thing whichever is there that would come one is adding a gain of l and another is adding a gain of 1 so effectively it is equivalent to adding a gain of l so i could uh, replace those two uh, low pass filter modules by in fact a single module now let me do that i have a signal x of n right and that is expanded by a factor of l now let me put here a low pass filter a single low pass filter whose gain is equivalent to l and uh, what about the cutoff frequency well out of pi by l and pi by m one is chopping off the signals up to pi by l another is chopping off it to pi by m so effectively whichever is minimum to that extent it gets chopped off so i could write it as min of pi by l comma pi by m okay hope you are able to follow that so that's the low pass filtering you would do here and then of course you have this module of down sample by a factor three and finally you have here xd tilde of n okay what is this this is x i tilde of n the signal right away there and what was the input to this this is x e of n correct that's the equivalent block diagram now let me again uh, just for the sake of completeness write what are the time periods of these signals uh, here it is t in the beginning of this block x e of n would give me t by l this also is t by l and of course here this is equal to m t by l that's all uh, this is as far as the block diagram is concerned uh, now let's work out an example here uh, similar to the way we were doing earlier let's do an example here what would we shall we consider here is the same thing uh, as i wrote earlier for example t prime or t dash equal to 1.5 times t we will take okay that means this is equivalent to 3 by 2 times t which means you upsample it by factor 2 followed by downsampling it by a factor 3 right so you upsample it by factor 2 integer factor 2 downsample it by a factor 3 and what about the cutoff frequency for your low pass filter so for the low pass filter the cutoff frequency would be min of pi by l and pi by m so that's equal to pi by pi by 2 and pi by 3 so that's equal to one is 90 and another is 60 so minimum of that is pi by 3 60 degrees right okay uh, let's start uh, drawing things here uh, okay so let me first draw assume that I have here omega and having a value assume that this has a value 1 and this is giving you xc of j omega okay assume that I am giving you the x of e power j omega also here this is my omega my 0 omega equal to 0 uh, let me also consider here I have this 2 till pi I have it so pi 2 pi 3 pi okay one copy I want to write down there so this is minus pi minus 2 pi 
ओके एंड माइनस थ्री पाई सो एज यूम आई हैव दिस कॉपी फ्रॉम माइनस पाई टू पाई सो दिस कॉपी इज देर फ्रॉम माइनस पाई टू पाई वट आई एम ड्राॅइंग इज एक्स ऑफ ई पार जे ओमेगा अनदर कॉपी ऑफ एक्स ऑफ ई पार जे ओमेगा विल बी देर एट टू पाई सो दस बींग पीरियाडिक आई एम ड्राॅइंग अनदर कॉपी देर राइट एंड अनदर कॉपी विल बी देर एट माइनस टू पाई सो एज यूम दैट दिस इज माई कॉपी एंड ऑफकोर्स दिस कंटिन्यूज ऑन बोथ साइड्स विद एन इंटरवल ऑफ टू पाई and what about this magnitude if i have the periodicity to be 1 this is equal to 1 by t so what i have drawn here is magnitude of x of e par j omega okay now we will draw the same thing for uh uh for expanded x e of e par j omega so we have so far drawn this the first and then up uh, this uh, increasing by l x e of n frequency spectrum of that is what we would like to draw now so just let me expand this part here okay what i am interested in is to draw x e of e par j omega okay um uh, this magnet what would happen now i am increasing the distance by a factor 2 so everything comes down so this gets when that is increased in the frequency spectrum uh, this gets scaled down when when that is stretching this gets compressed here so that's getting scaled up there so around pi by 2 i would be having a value here okay for uh, easy to track i am just dropping some dotted lines here hopefully they comes right so this is 3 pi by 2 this is 3 pi let me drop those things here as well okay and in between here okay and this is a 2 pi and in between 2 pi and 3 pi because when that gets uh, scaled down that would come there okay so whichever is there uh, so this is uh, would come by a factor 2 so that pi would come to pi by 2 here right this is pi by 2 this is pi by 2 that copy would be coming here and then of course next copy would come here the other copy would be coming there of course i i only draw there three cycles but if i had uh drawn multiple copies would have been able to see that okay uh so this is this comes like this and i think those are enough copies on that side so let me now draw this on this side this is a copy another copy and of course it would continue so this is what what is it that i am drawing expanded version of x e of e par j omega magnitude and of course this would be equivalent to still 1 by t what all we did is scaling on x axis okay so this of course is now pi by 2 right and this is minus pi by 2 this is pi this is 3 pi by 2 okay then this is 4 pi by 2 that's 2 pi And so on. Okay, this is zero. This is pi. Uh, I am using the, almost the same scale now. I am able to manage that. Okay. So what's the next step? This is what x e of e par j omega is. Now you do a cutoff frequency of pi by three with a gain of l. Okay. The l is of course two here, but let's keep it as l only. We use this uh, specific values for just to draw things on omega axis. Okay. So and so this should be there from minus sixty degrees to plus sixty degrees. Okay. So let me draw that out here. Yeah, this this came very badly. So let me erase that and try to draw somewhat better than that. 
yeah hopefully better uh, well it is from minus 60 to plus 60 okay this is minus 90 okay somewhere here so let me write here and 60 so here that's one copy around zero well it should have been symmetric that's that doesn't look symmetric so let me make a slightly better hopefully slightly slightly better thing than that okay otherwise you consider that this is minus pi by 3 sorry plus pi by 3 and pi by 3 and this is going to be l where else will this come again a 2 pi this would come okay so again a co consider a copy here and of course the next copy would come at minus 2 pi right so that means somewhere here that's what you are doing right this is your uh, let me call this has uh, low pass filter so it just h subscript l is what i would use here okay of e power j omega and to get this xi of e power j omega all i did, did uh, need to do now is to uh, multiply the x the frequency spectrums of xe of n and this low pass filter what will i get out of that now so you could notice here by the way this is getting chopped off at these values right this is chopped off here of course same thing would happen at multiples of 2 pi oh, sorry yeah so uh, what is it that I am going to get here? This is my pi by 3, minus pi by 3 to plus pi by 3, minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. Okay. So, this is, assume this is my 0. That's my 0. Okay. It has slowly skewed to the left, but assume this is your 0. Okay. So, well, this has got chopped off here. Right. So, that means... Uh, at pi by 3 it, uh, uh, ideally this would have come till pi by 2 this would have come ideally what would have happened let me draw it with some other color mm, this would have been if I take minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 that would have come like this Now that this got chopped off here, how do I get here? This would come till here, right? And then this value is like this. Of course, the same thing would happen here. So that's... Okay, assume I'm drawing. If I'm not drawing it symmetrically, you do it. You assume that this is symmetric. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, so if I had extended it to pi by 2, it would have touched 0 there, right? And uh, what's the magnitude of this? Well, this magnitude is uh, 1 by t multiplied with L. So, this goes to L by t, right? And this value is pi by 3. This is minus pi by 3. And what about this? This is, of course, at 2 pi and this is at minus 2 pi. Okay, now next step. Uh, you need to do now down sampling by a factor 3 right so that's what we will do now i am going to down sample it by a factor 3 okay this is all omega only omega okay if you want me to write what it means here this is nothing but uh, in terms of the variables i have written here uh, x i tilde of e power j omega okay this is nothing but x i tilde of e power j omega obtained through okay if you if it's up to you if you want you could keep magnitude thing magnitude of hl of e power j omega into magnitude of x e of e power j omega okay that's what you obtain right so this is your zero okay uh, consider this is pi by 3 
this is minus pi by 3 okay then this is your 90 60 90 minus 90 okay and somewhere 180 degrees okay this is pi okay this is 2 pi and this is minus 2 pi well when you are doing it by a 3 this would stretch omega axis gets multiplied by 3 so then what would happen uh, if uh, yeah uh, had it been at uh, had it been till pi by 2 it would have gone to 3 pi by 2 okay so 3 pi by 2 means somewhere here it would have gone there okay assume that your magnitude is here it would have gone if I had that been this this would have gone this similarly on the other side also okay this is your uh, okay uh, this is your minus pi minus uh, pi and somewhere in between here right it would have gone uh, till here but now that this has been chopped off what would happen now uh, this is there only from minus pi by 3 to pi by 3 so that would be there like this what you got here is like this it's there only from minus pi to pi and of course the same thing here uh, another copy placed at this value and this trend would continue so this also would have a lift here okay and would continue here and suppose if you are not doing that low pass filtering there would have been aliasing some here okay still uh, resting so this is your final uh, xd of e power this again would uh, sorry this would continue here okay and of course this would continue here okay so this is your magnitude of x i tilde okay x d sorry it's down sampling x d tilde of e power j omega right hope you are able to follow this uh, what about this magnitude here uh, this magnitude will be again here this gets multiplied by factor m correct uh, yeah not multiplied in fact gets divided so what you get here is l or m times t that's what the magnitude is that's all uh, with that let me give you one example to work out okay uh, very similar one I uh, will give you one with slightly different uh, values to work out uh, uh, this, this is the first one we have not given anything so far right in this okay exercise one uh, let's take slightly a different uh, time period 4 t by 3 what does that mean down sampling up sampling by 3 down sampling by uh, 4 okay now also give me let me give you directly the x of e power j omega okay x of e power j omega this is omega 0 okay let's say this is 2 pi minus 2 pi okay somewhere here pi somewhere here minus pi okay of course this pi by 2 pi by 2 well every time that need not be hope you also got bored with this triangular uh, limited bandwidth signal so let's take a semicircular one uh, also assume that this has a band limited frequency of uh, minus 3 pi by 4 okay omega c equal to 3 pi by 4 okay which means pi by 2 plus pi by 4 okay uh, so this is uh, uh, pi by 2 is here plus pi by 4 somewhere here in between similarly here let me take that yeah this is pi by 2 plus pi by 4 okay this also somewhere here so hopefully i'll be able to dry a semi circle here doesn't really matter in which uh, shape it is of course that would continue okay so this is there from uh, minus 3 pi by 4 to 
3 pi by 4 okay uh, well it's periodic of course this is what I am drawing is absolute value of x of e bar j omega I could take any value here let me take simply one okay the next one would start I leave it to you to uh, draw it multiple copies here again this this is nothing but uh, anyway uh, pi by 2 plus pi by 4 right so this is pi by 2 and half of that similarly here let me call pi by 2 okay somewhere here and uh, here too, uh, by here, and um, something like that. Okay, enough of drawing. You 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 draw it on the other side also, the same way. Okay, that's has been given to you now, and what I want you to do is plot and label. You plot and label. Uh, absolute value of x c of e power j omega right uh, expanded one then figure out what is the low pass filtering that you have to do let me write call it as like the earlier example h l of e power j omega then multiplication of the both should give you x i tilde of e power j omega okay then down sampling it by uh, the whatever the value should give you magnitude of x d tilde of e power j omega so you figure out what should be the low pass filtering and do this out okay so with this the concepts of uh, uh, the uh, changing the sampling rate by a non integer factor is done right so let me uh, so with this we are done uh, now let me spend some more time on uh, uh, just taking a look back and uh, see what are what could be the applications of that so we won't be covering any there are few other topics in the uh, textbook Oppenheim and Schiffer for example multi rate sampling is another topic we have not touched upon uh, nevertheless whatever we have discussed now for uh, non integer uh, sampling by a non integer factor forms as the basis for multi-rate sampling which is more efficient way of sampling again that's a very important uh, chapter and it's a, a big thing and it's a very vast literature uh, in itself that's a very vast literature so we will not go through that uh, at least in this course but hopefully if you take some advanced uh, signal processing course later you would probably will have a chance to go through it or if you are interested you could simply go through that Oppenheim and Sheffer and uh, you should be able to follow that uh, on your own okay uh, anyway that we will not have as a part of uh, formally as a part of our uh, this course DSP basic course okay uh, uh, let me take few moments now uh, to see different uh, applications of the sampling okay uh, like a few examples more uh, this is again I'm uh, grabbing here some slides from my the other courses that I'm teaching that's on computer introduction to computer vision uh, there is a so first I would like to show you some cases where sampling plays an important role when you are dealing with the uh, images okay uh, there is for example something called as an optical flow where you essentially you have two frames of a moving object are captured at different time moments you want to see how much this object has moved from this frame to the other frame so essentially you will be keeping track of each pixel here where it has moved and then uh, depending on the type of uh, algorithm that you are going to use there are some set of methods called optical flow methods which would work very efficiently when the moment is in terms of very few pixels but what would happen is the two frames that you have captured that might be moment of some tens of pixels so in order to do that you do this finding out the motion estimation you do it in a hierarchical way where you subsample the images and that is where you do the first optical flow estimation and then you come back that you compensate already and come to the next level and so on it's okay it's very likely you might not have understood most of things i have blabbered so far about this but that's okay but all you need to take home thing here is you need to subsample the images that's what would happen okay by the way uh, some of you might have seen him uh, so there's a famous painter 
uh, Van Gogh uh, from Netherlands. Okay, yeah, his poetry art is taken as an example here. Suppose, as I mentioned, basically you will subsample the images. This is something you need to do in various uh, applications. You would see here. Let me again upsample them with something, and you let me see it a zoomed version of that. So you could notice, for example, on the left right hand side picture, when you subsample it by factor H, you have a lot of artifacts that got introduced into the image. Can you guess why? When you are subsampling, suppose if you have the highest frequencies that you have, when if you are not subsampling it at the Nyquist rate, you could have problems. So here, that's where again. Uh, uh, sampling comes to your understanding of the concepts of sampling would come to your rescue okay uh, so for example what could you do then if there are high frequencies which are causing aliasing problem uh, well you apply initially a low pass filter right depending on it the level you want to do it and then do it okay and then you do the subsampling so for example if you do it these are the original sizes these are the zoomed versions you could see here if you are doing a low pass filtering first the simple Gaussian smoothing okay followed by uh, then the subsampling this is what you would expect you still get the outline of the picture it's a, like a kind of a blurred version of your original image but nevertheless you are not having any artifacts here so this is one instance where you should have the understanding of sampling okay i'll post you one um, link to one youtube video i'll post it in the description of this uh, you, description of my youtube video i'll post you a link to another youtube video uh, go through it. Uh, uh, it's uh, although this is uh, this description was like while they were using a particular tool. Um, how changing the sampling rate? How would you change it? And what would be the impact? They would be uh, discussing in that. It's a short video. Uh, although that tool is of not interest for us, and also sometimes uh, the discussion might be very in a layman's terms. But that's where you could appreciate how having some background in uh, sampling is essential. Uh, to deal with uh, uh, like uh, subsam like uh, changing the sampling rates of this or to decide in the first place what should be the sampling rate uh, that you should use while you are acquiring a audio signal okay so with that we will we are done with the uh, sampling part okay uh, if you have as usual if you have any questions you post them in the comment section of this video or Anyway, we will discuss it in the next Zoom session uh, and uh, that's all for now. Uh, from the next video lecture onwards, we will move on to discrete Fourier transform. Of course, first with the discrete Fourier series and we will go in steps. Okay, We are done for now with this. Uh, hope you understood things uh, and uh, see you in the next video lecture. Thanks for watching. Bye. Take care.